Wherever there is a ray trace render engine, you will find image sampling. This is because image sampling is, in essence, the mechanism that a ray trace renderer uses to gather the pixel information and color values that will be used to produce the final render. That means, in order to control the quality coming from our render engine, we need to know how to work with its image sampling controls. With the addition of the unified sampler controls to the UI in 3ds Max 2014, things just got a whole lot simpler and more powerful in this department. To take a look at just what we mean by that, open up the miunifiedsampling.max scene file, which can of course be found inside your working files folder. Now, because the whole issue of what image sampling is and how it works can get pretty complex, we are not here in any way going to try and illustrate the differences regarding the inner workings of the new unified sampling engine as compared to what is now being called the classic ray traced mode. In fact, as the complexity of image sampling means that it could quite easily take up an entire training course in and of itself, we are going to work at keeping things as simple as possible here. What we are going to do is present the result of three test renders, each coming from the two sampling engines as we put them to work in our current test scene. The scene itself has been set up to present quite a challenge for image sampling. We have two reflective materials that both have blurry rather than glossy reflections, and each material has their reflection sampling values turned down to a very low count of two. We also have two mental ray sky portals acting as area lights, both casting shadows, and again both with their shadow sampling values set at a very low and noisy value of two. And to make matters even more complicated, if I just move my time slider to frame 20 here, you can see we have a number of animated teapots moving pretty rapidly through the frame. This enables us to make use of the fact that we do have motion blur enabled in the scene. In fact, if I just hit the F10 keyboard shortcut to bring up the render setup dialog, and then come to the camera effects rollout in the render tab, you can see for yourself that that is indeed the case. Let's take a look then at what the scene looks like when rendered using previously accepted test render sampling values. In the sampling quality rollout, that means making certain that we have classic ray traced mode enabled. And in the sampling values, setting the minimum value to one over four and the maximum value to one. Then we can hit the render button. With the render complete, what we get back, as you can see, is pretty horrid looking and will obviously present quite a challenge to the image sampling engines if they are to get anything like a reasonably clean image from this scene. Because performing image sampling at anything like production quality is always going to be relatively slow, we are going to be jumping into Photoshop to take a look at three pre-rendered examples of the sampling engines at work. So, as a first test then, as we already have classic mode enabled, let's continue to use that and set up what I would describe as some minimum quality production settings. Settings that on a straightforward image, such as one that has little or no blurry reflections and soft shadows in the frame, would probably yield a high quality result. These settings would be a minimum samples value of one and a maximum of 16. Contrast threshold set to 0.005, and while we are at it, let's also switch the filter type to triangle. Do keep in mind that these settings, as we look at our example renders, have been applied to a medium HD frame, so a resolution of 1280 by 720, as opposed to the test render scene here, which only weighs in at 700 by 394. Instead of hitting render then, let's jump over to Photoshop and take a look at the image we would be getting if we rendered with these settings. Well, what we can see is that whilst things have certainly improved in a massive way as compared to the test render we took a minute or two ago, we obviously are still seeing quite a number of quality issues that would in reality probably make this render unusable as a finished production piece. Many paying clients would for instance probably be unhappy with the moire patterning that we can see here, especially in the brighter reflection areas. If we take a look at the reflections themselves, there is still a considerable amount of noise present in them. The motion blur clearly leaves a lot to be desired. And if we take a look at the dark areas on the underside of a number of the teapots, you can see that there are some ugly looking noise issues happening there. Now, 
This render took 1 hour and 23 minutes to complete on a very low-end quad-core i5 laptop using 4GB of RAM. Let's jump back to Max then and see what we can do to go about improving things. Well, in all honesty, all we really need to do is access the sampling mode drop-down, set it to the new unified option, and then set the quality value to 1. That really is all there is to it. Quality values of 1 to 1 1.5 are deemed the sweet spot for production quality renders, whilst the default sampling range of 1 to 128 should be good for most, if not all, of the typical rendering scenarios that we are likely to encounter. Let's go ahead now and make our comparison in Photoshop. Again, seeing what we would get from a render using these settings. Well, at a zoom level of 100, as we are here, we may feel a little puzzled as we flick between these two images, because although the noise present does shift around a little when we alternate between them, there doesn't really seem to be any huge improvement in quality between the two. Well, in truth, there really isn't. Although, if we zoom to 300%, you can see that the moiré patterning we mentioned is much less noticeable in the unified version. The thing that we really want to take note of here, though, the thing that is startling, is the fact that the unified sampler gave us this render with pretty much comparable image quality in just 23 minutes, less than a quarter of the time for the original. The unified engine can do this because the way the system works makes it so much easier for the engine to perform intelligent sampling, making informed choices regarding when and where samples are needed. That means the unified sampling engine can complete a comparable quality render in a much shorter time span than classic mode. Or, of course, we could go the other way and increase the quality settings so as to produce a superior quality image within a very similar time frame which, in fact, is what we have done with our third image here. Bumping the values way up to a quality setting of 5 and a max samples value of 256. As you can see, the moiré patterning is gone, the reflections are clearer, and although there probably is more that could be done to bring this image up to scratch, we would definitely have to say, as we switch between this and our initial render, that the level of improvement the unified sampler has brought to the table is huge especially given the deliberately difficult nature of this test scene. Things are all the more impressive when we realise that this render was completed in 1 hour and 17 minutes, still less than the time required to complete the initial, and by comparison, very poor classic mode render. Sampling in Mental Ray has gotten both simpler and more powerful with the implementation of the unified sampling engine. With just two controls to worry about, the quality and maximum samples values, we can quickly determine what we think the scene will require in terms of sampling settings, and then just hit the render button and walk away. Even extremely difficult scenes, such as the one we have been working with here, can be brought under control and cleaned up. More than that, it can oftentimes be done in a fraction of the time taken when using the now demoted classic sampling mode.